Hey, Happy Campers, Todd here, Great American RV Superstores. Today, we're gonna to talk about your Dometic RV refrigerator, which is your standard Dometic that works off of either propane or electric. So here we have our Dometic standard RV refrigerator, works off of electric, which is 110, or propane. Uh, we have two buttons up top. Yours may look a little different. It may have a different type of display, but all in all, the Dometic refrigerator operation is pretty well the same. On this particular one, we have an on-off button, self-explanatory. We also have another button over here, which is your auto select button. Uh, if you push it once, your auto light will come on. Auto means that it functions off of electric, and uh, dominantly whenever you're plugged into shore power and then whenever you unplug then it's going to swap over to propane automatically if you push it again then it will operate on gas only which means if you plug it into shore power it's not going to kick back over it'll only run on propane so in, in the event that that uh, gas runs out then that's it that unit is going to uh, stop cooling Last thing that we have up here is our two lights. We have an auto light and a check light. Auto is obviously gonna signify when it's in auto mode. Our check light signifies whenever there's a problem. So let's talk about that for a second. If we have a problem on electric, what can we check? Well, let's start off with, we wanna check our shore power, make sure that no breakers are tripped on the, either at your house or on the power pole at the campground. Next, we wanna go over to our breaker panel inside the unit. Check that, make sure we don't have any breakers tripped there. And then we'll step outside in a second. I'll show you the outlet that's outside and you can plug in a phone charger there and make sure that that outlet is getting power. Next, let's talk about if it's not operating off of gas, whether it's on auto and we unplugged it from our shore power and, and it's still getting a check light or if we just chose gas as our option, once again, getting a check light. Oftentimes customers are pulling their units out of storage. Most common thing, you have your LP tanks turned off. Well, you turn them on, there's air in the lines. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is go over to your stove, turn your stove on, light it, let it run for a little bit, make sure you have a nice blue flame, cut it off, and then go back to the operation of your fridge by just turning it off, turning it back on, and see if that doesn't fix the problem. We'll step outside, look at a couple things out there that you can listen for to make sure that it's actually trying to ignite and that'll help you out to know whether you have a problem with air on the lines or another issue. Here we are on the outside of our refrigerator. It's gonna be directly behind your refrigerator on the outside of the unit. There's two twist tabs at the bottom here. Turn those, pull this out, and on Dometic fridges, you're gonna have this drain tube that sticks out of the grill right there. We wanna make sure whenever we put this uh, cap back on that this is sticking out. That way no water drips onto this wood and rots it out whenever your refrigerator drains. So inside here, we have our 110 receptacle with the plug-in. That's what I was talking about earlier. You can stick a phone charger in there and check to make sure that you have power there. We also have our 12 volt lines here coming in there is a fuse on the inside and your breaker panel that goes for this 12 volt so you could also check that to make sure your board is getting power uh, from here we have our board our absorption unit and we have a gas line here our igniter and burner is behind here on our flue tube now anytime you open this up be careful because all this area can be very hot and of course we have 12 volts and we also have 110, so be very careful and cautious of what you're messing with back here. The main thing is it gets very, very hot. So the main thing we wanna concentrate on when we come back here, after we have initiated propane or we've unplugged our shore power, is going back and listening for this ticking sound right here. That sound is actually your igniter trying to ignite the propane. And if there's air in the line, there's a really, really tiny hole that's gonna take forever to get that air out. So that's why I say go bleed that stove out first, then come out and initiate the system. It's gonna try probably about three times before it quits and gives you that check light. So give it a couple of opportunities to light. And if it doesn't, like I said, you know what to do now. If it doesn't actually go in and try to ignite whenever you unplug, then you wanna go ahead and give our service center a call, set up an appointment so we can get it checked out. And don't forget, whenever you're putting that cover on, put your drain tube right through that hole. So we've been outside, we have a little better understanding of what to check out and make sure we're listening for the right things and for as far as operation. 
couple of tips that I'm going to give you before we go is this is an absorption unit. So it's not compressor driven. It's not pushing cold air in. It's taking hot air out. So one thing that you want to do is leave about an inch gap along the back wall and then especially up here by the fins and make sure that you're also leaving a little space in between your goods. That way the air can circulate around it and, and actually absorb the heat out of those items. It's not going to circulate like your normal refrigerator. So this is the best practice to have in order to have a more efficient working refrigerator. Another thing is plug your unit in early. It can take up to 12 hours for that unit to cool off before it's at proper temperature. Put your items in your household refrigerator and an ice chest before you put them in here. Make sure they're good and cold before you put them in. Otherwise, it's really having to start over in absorbing and getting down to temperature. So keep those chips in mind. Last big important tip that I'm going to give you is after you're done with your camping trip, turn your refrigerator off, defrost your unit, which means get all this ice out of here, and you're going to end up with a puddle of water in this freezer because there's no drain hose up here. So once that, once that freezer is defrosted, get all of that water out because it, it will leak out right here and it'll get down and it'll damage that wood and that's not a covered item under warranty and it can get kind of expensive to fix those kind of things. Now on our refrigerator portion right here, we do have a pan where the water drains out, goes to that drain tube that we talked about earlier. Uh, so that'll kind of work its way out there. Always suggest still wiping out any moisture and when you go to store it, leave those doors slightly cracked open that way, any moisture that's in there can escape, dry out, and you don't have a moldy, mildewy fridge whenever you're ready to go camping. Thanks for watching our video today. We really appreciate the love, the likes, the shares, the comments, all that fun stuff. Check out the YouTube channel where we have plenty more videos for you to get educated and be a pro like the rest of us. Here at Great American RV Superstores, we bring the how-to to you.